Greetings and salutations, everyone. My name is Andrew Kirikoff, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're talking about my week three wide receiver rankings for the 2020 fantasy football season. On today's episode, of course, we're going to be talking about my top 36 wide receiver rankings. But before then, I want to talk about some matchups at the wide receiver position, which wide receivers have the most advantageous matchups going into week three, and which defenses are giving up the most points to opposing wide receivers in a half PPR scoring format. That's right. Majority of our rankings that we do all week long are half PPR based, just so you know. Uh, for those of you, we're trying to meet everyone in the middle. Of course, if you play in a standard league or in a full PPR league, we try to meet you guys in the middle with a half PPR ranking system. Now, like I always mention, rankings are subject to change. Don't forget that. Uh, because of the injuries and different circumstances that go on throughout a week, rankings are always going to be changing on a daily basis. For those of you trying to stay up to date on those, you can go to patreon.com slash Andrew Kirchhoff. All that information is down in the description of the video. I'm creating extra content there for those of you who are looking to support the channel in other ways. Uh, outside of that, again, timestamps are down below in the description of the video for those of you who are looking for a specific player for me to talk about. Outside of that, I cannot thank you guys enough for the support. We're so close to 26,000 subscribers. Holy moly. I cannot thank you guys enough for those of you who are going down to the comment section. I read every comment. Trust me. You guys know I do. Uh, I'm in there. Um, I can't answer every question. That is an impossibility for however many comments I have. So I do really do appreciate your guys' support. For those of you who are reaching out via Twitter DM, I can't answer all those guys. There's a, there's a lot of questions coming through, but I really do appreciate you guys' support uh, going forward. So thank you again. Um, it's just been incredible. All right, so smash that subscribe button, hit that like button, and let's get into the content, shall we? We're talking about week three wide receiver rankings, but beginning with matchups. So as we can see on screen, this is how many points defenses are giving up to opposing wide receivers in a half PPR scoring format thus far this season throughout the first two weeks of the season. Now, as you can see, the Seattle Seahawks are giving up the most points to opposing wide receivers by a wide margin. In week one, of course, they played against the Atlanta Falcons and three of those receivers absolutely went off. And just this past week, even against Cam Newton in an offense that we didn't know if they were capable in passing the ball, Julian Edelman torched them. Nikhil Harry stepped up. Um, and they absolutely had themselves a pretty good game in the passing game. So again, the Seattle Seahawks, who will take on the Dallas Cowboys, that is going to be some trouble for them because the Dallas Cowboys have got some threats out wide uh, that are definitely going to be knocking on Seattle's door this week to score on them. So, of course, Seattle Seahawks giving up the most points, but the Minnesota Vikings, of course, I, I think that a little bit of the balance from Minnesota's number two spot here is mainly from uh, Green Bay in week one. I, I really don't think that the Indianapolis Colts did much in the passing game against them. As soon as Paris Campbell went down and, you know, T.Y. Hilton was still dealing with an injury last week, uh, it just all went to, you know, right into the toilet. Uh, regardless, the Miami Dolphins giving up a lot of points. That's good for Gardner Minshew on Thursday Night Football. The Atlanta Falcons, of course, giving up a lot of points to wide receivers. Maybe Allen Robinson would like to join us this week uh, and, you know, kind of help us out in the 2020 season for the first time. The Denver Broncos, now after they lost A.J. Boye, they're going to be struggling. They have to take on Tampa Bay. And Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, that is a tough matchup. But either way, these are the easier schedules for wide receivers this upcoming week, just to kind of give you some context. I also want to cover the more difficult schedules as of right now, the teams that are giving up the fewest points to opposing wide receivers. The Arizona Cardinals, surprisingly enough, are, you know, limiting wide receivers. Uh, and even though Tariq McLaurin had himself a pretty good week this past week, uh, I think, you know, there's always a possibility that Marvin Jones this upcoming week could have himself a decent game. But again, they've been limiting teams. The Baltimore Ravens secondary, definitely one to keep an eye out on. When you have Marlon Humphreys and Marcus Peters, that is always going to be a difficult task for you know opposing offenses to try to score on them. The Cincinnati Bengals at 30 is a little bit of a surprise, but that's mainly because everyone's just running on Cincinnati. And I expect uh, the Eagles to do so once again this week. But either way, just kind of give you some context as to teams and how many points they're giving up to opposing wide receivers. Now that we've covered that, we can go ahead and we can move on and start talking about my top 36 wide receivers on the week. Again, if you have not yet already, click that subscribe button, join the community. We're going to be creating fantasy football content here on the daily for the entirety of the 2020 season. A subscription here is free. Just click the button. It'll be in your sub box every single day. So I do appreciate that once again. All right, so let's go ahead and let's start talking about my number one wide receiver on the week. It really shouldn't be a surprise because this is an automatic starter. DeAndre Hopkins going into week three. He gets to take on a pretty easy matchup against the Detroit Lions. Again, the Detroit Lions, I've talked about them over the last couple of weeks. They've lost a lot of cornerback specialists. Desmond Trafant uh, could be out once again this week. We're going to have to kind of monitor those cornerbacks. But regardless of who is playing against DeAndre Hopkins, DeAndre Hopkins has, has had incredible opportunity throughout the first two weeks of the 2020 season. 25 total targets. Just this past week had nine targets that led to eight receptions, 68 yards and a touchdown. All in all, DeAndre Hopkins has performed way better than any of us really anticipated uh, and has been just an absolute monster, especially for the discount you were able to get him 
late in your potential second round. Uh, so again, DeAndre Hopkins, a pretty good prospect as of right now and has been feasting and has a very good matchup in week one. He's an Adam, automatic star. Moving on to our number two, we have ourselves Devontae Adams. Again, he's still dealing with a hamstring injury. Hopefully, he'll be ready to go. He'll probably miss today's practice, but the two biggest factors are whether he practices or is limited in Thursday and Friday's practices prior to the Sunday game against the New Orleans Saints. Now, hopefully, he's ready and up for the task because, again, I think he's going to be able to feast regardless of whatever defense he plays against. But an early season injury, once again, for Devontae Adams is definitely throwing a wrench in many of our, uh, you know, potential lineups this upcoming week but if in fact he's out we'll talk about Alan Lazard and or Marcus Valdez Gantling on Sunday outside of that if you have Devontae Adams and he's healthy and he's ready to go against New Orleans you're definitely firing him up uh, and letting him rip against that defense so we move on to our number three we have ourselves Tyreek Hill now Tyreek Hill like I mentioned a little bit earlier he plays against the Baltimore Ravens uh, which is a very good defense in terms of matchups now the question is, is he going to be able to be a viable enough play this upcoming week with Patrick Mahomes? I think that this is such a highly scored matchup between Baltimore and Kansas City that there's going to be a lot of utilization of a Tyree kill in this offense. Last week, 11 targets against a tough matchup against uh, that Los Angeles Chargers secondary, which again has some pretty good corners. Uh, he had 11 targets for five receptions, 99 receiving yards, and a touchdown. So again, um, he's had some pretty good games over the last two weeks, even scored in week one against uh, Houston. So Two touchdowns in a row, that's a great sign. But going forward, the question is, can he compete against the secondary? I don't think anybody can guard Tyreek Hill. It's just a matter of whether or not Patrick Mahomes is going to find him. He's starting to target him even more now. So hopefully this is a highly scored matchup and we can find ourselves with Tyreek Hill with another one of these boom games uh, this coming week. Either way, he's my number three and you're starting him regardless. Number four, Calvin Ridley. That's right. So I mentioned Calvin Ridley at number four and he's on the thumbnail for a reason. Now, as of right now, Julio Jones is dealing with an injury. Now, I don't know to what extent they're going to hold him out for. He'll probably miss today's practice, and we'll have to monitor it as the week goes on. But if, in fact, we're going to see Julio Jones with an injury that's going to hold him out for week three, that even makes Calvin Ridley a better wide receiver. Let's not forget that Calvin Ridley, as of right now, is the number one wide receiver in fantasy football. That's correct. He scored two touchdowns each of the last two weeks in fantasy football and has been unstoppable just this past week. 10 targets leading to 7 receptions, 109 receiving yards, and 2 receiving touchdowns. Calvin Ridley has taken that jump that we all anticipated him doing. We thought during the offseason he would be this year's Chris Godwin, and that's really starting to look like that's the case. He's really stepped up, uh, and as of right now, if in fact Julio is going to miss some time, Calvin Ridley gets an even bigger jump, but I'm not even anticipating Julio to miss this week, and I still have Calvin Ridley as my number four. Uh, that's how confident I am in his potential this week against Chicago. Uh, we move on. We have ourselves number five, Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper gets to take on the Seattle Seahawks secondary. Like I mentioned before, anybody who gets to play against Seahawks this week has a very good matchup. And the fact that Amari Cooper has had 23 targets over the last two weeks is an incredible sign. Just this past week, nine targets leading to six receptions and 100 receiving yards. That is perfect. That's the exact stats that we want to see. Of course, he's always going to have the upside of a touchdown. But if he doesn't get it, as long as he's getting those receptions and those yards, uh, again, that's two back-to-back 100-yard -back receiving games for Amari Cooper in this passing offense. So again, he is a guy that they're going to continue to rely upon with the absence of Michael Gallup as a relevant wide receiver in this offense as of late. Amari um, Cooper has really stepped up and helped them down the stretch uh, along with C.D. Lamb. But again, as of right now, Amari Cooper against the secondary, uh, pretty good matchup on hand. Uh, and I think he's ready to step up and maybe score a touchdown this week. Uh, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, we talked about Julio Jones. I think if Julio's playing, I'm still, I'm still firing him up. I am not worried about him. It's just a matter of whether he's healthy and ready to go. We just want to be a little bit precautious uh, and kind of evaluate everything and understand exactly what he's dealing with. Now, for those of you who own Julio Jones, do not panic. Yes, he may have gotten injured a little bit last week, but he did drop a passing touchdown that was in his direction, literally hit him in the hands. Russell Gage on a trick play threw him a pass. It literally hits him in the hands. He's one step from falling into the end zone. He drops the pass, unfortunately. He turns that you know average middling five, six point week into a 16 point week with one play like that because it was a deep bomb pass. So again, Julio Jones, still a relevant wide receiver. We just got to keep an eye on him. He's always the guy you're starting regardless, as long as he's healthy in the lineup, nobody can really cover him. He's one of the best wide receivers, if not the best wide receiver in the NFL, uh, widely known. So either way, he's my last of the top six wide receivers. The next wide receiver I wanted to talk about was Chris Godwin at number seven, because again, Chris Godwin, as of this moment in time has cleared the concussion protocol, even though he was entered into the concussion protocol last Wednesday, even though he played on Sunday. It was a very weird circumstance, but again, he missed week two regardless. 
And this upcoming week, he has already been cleared. Bruce Arians has said he's ready to go, uh, and he should be perfectly fine. So I expect Chris Godwin to step up into this offense, playing against the Denver secondary, uh, which, again, has been beat up over the last couple weeks uh, with injuries. Uh, I think with him and Mike Evans full goes from here on out, uh, they should have a pretty good one-two combo, and we should really see the potential of this offense start to blossom. And I think Chris Godwin is the guy that's going to be stepping up uh, with Brady in the slot position and dominating. So as my number seven wide receiver, very confident in the play there. You're starting him regardless. Moving on to our next wide receiver, we have ourselves Adam Thielen. Now, Adam Thielen in week one was incredible, right? Two receiving touchdowns. Uh, and then just this past week, kind of was a dud. But the thing is, he's had eight targets each of the last two weeks. Hopefully that number is going to continue to increase, but... He is the only receiving option that is viable in this offense. Kirk Cousins knows it. And as of this week, he plays against the Tennessee Titans. I don't think that that secondary is really capable of stopping a number one wide receiver like Adam Thielen. I think they're going to try their best. They're going to try to double cover him. But Adam Thielen is going to be able to feast. He's another one of these wide receivers that, again, in my opinion, is going to be a top 12 wide receiver this week. Or not even just this week, but this year. Uh, he's going to continue to dominate. But it's going to have to depend on whether or not Kirk Cousins is up to the task. Again, if Kirk Cousins is putting up poor performances, it's definitely going to reflect via Adam Thielen. Uh, but again, uh, that's that whole combination of quarterback and wide receiver and whether or not you could trust the quarterback and the wide receiver. Regardless, I'm starting up Adam Thielen this week against Tennessee. I'm excited about the matchup and his upcoming potential and his opportunity on hand as the lone wide receiver of this Vikings offense. He's my number eight. Uh, number nine is Mike Evans. Again, like I was mentioning with Chris Godwin, uh, they're in a pretty advantageous matchup against the Denver secondary, again, dealing with so many injuries. Uh, Mike Evans just this past week against Carolina, 10 targets, 7 receptions for 104 receiving yards and a touchdown. That's a far better you know, box score in comparison to what he had in week one. But this past two weeks has scored back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. That's a great sign in an offense in which, again, they have been struggling with injuries, but these wide receivers have been stepping up regardless. I think going forward against the Denver matchup, if in fact the running game does stall out to an extent, which I doubt it does, um, they're still going to have so many opportunities in the passing game. Mike Evans is really starting to uh, take that next step as to being the number one wide receiver and potentially having uh, one of the better seasons of his career, hopefully going forward. Again, two touchdowns in the first two weeks is a pretty good sign for Mike Evans. We're trying to get him to double-digit touchdowns this year, uh, which is hopefully uh, the plan. Either way, uh, my number 10 is DK Metcalf. And it may be a surprise to many of you that DK Metcalf has shown himself into the top 10 of the wide receiver position, but he's earned it. I mean, the last two weeks, he's averaged 17 fantasy points in a half PPR scoring format. On top of that, in the last two weeks, he's averaged about four receptions and 90 receiving yards and a touchdown. Uh, whether it's six to eight targets, doesn't matter. And last week, he did it against the New England Patriots secondary. Like in week one against the Falcons secondary, we thought, okay, that seems about, that's reasonable. If he dominates against them, that's reasonable. But the fact that he was covered by Stephon Gilmore for majority of that game, they were scrapping the entire time, and he still was able to get an extra step on Stephon Gilmore, one of the best cornerbacks or defensive players in the entire National Football League, yet he was able to dominate against them, put up a fantastic fantasy performance, and now he plays against Dallas, where he'll be able to impose his will once again. I love the matchup. I love DK Metcalf going forward. He's my number 10. The next player I wanted to talk about was Terry McLaurin. And as of right now, Terry McLaurin, uh, to be honest, kind of silenced all of the fantasy owners that were complaining after week one. Sure, he didn't have a great week one performance, but Terry McLaurin has proven in the past that he is going to be a dominant wide receiver in the National Football League going into his second year. And he proved that this past week, played against the Arizona Cardinals, who are giving up the fewest points to opposing wide receivers and still had himself a fantastic performance. Uh, 10 targets, 7 receptions, 125 receiving yards, and a touchdown. He has such high upside, um, and as of right now, has been performing incredibly, um, especially against Patrick Peterson, which was great. Now, he plays against the Cleveland Browns. Again, that secondary is beat up. He'll be going against Denzel Ward probably for the entire game. I don't have a problem with that. I think Terry McLaurin, another great play this upcoming week for Dwayne Haskins of this team. Again, I think the Washington football team are probably going to be in negative game scripts for the entire year, which is going to give Terry McLaurin even more opportunities for garbage time touchdowns and or work in the second half, in which typically other wide receivers on teams that are winning so hard, like anybody on the Baltimore Ravens, you're not really getting starters to you know get rotated in the fourth quarter. Terry McLaurin instead is getting an extra quarter of opportunity there and producing on it. The next wide receiver I want to talk about is Juju Smith-Schuster. He is the final wide receiver of my top 12 this upcoming week. Now, the thing about Juju Smith-Schuster is that today he missed practice with a knee injury. We're going to monitor that. We're going to keep an eye on that. Again, a lot of injuries are taking place. We have to make sure that we are staying up to date with our wide receivers, our running backs, and making sure that they're healthy and ready to go into these weeks. 
But regardless, he's been pretty good over the last couple weeks. Scored two touchdowns in week one. Of course, wasn't able to score a touchdown this past week. But again, this offense has been functioning beautifully. They've had back-to-back -back weeks with 100-yard rushers. Their defense has been stable. Ben Roethlisberger's looked fantastic after coming off of that injury from last year that knocked him out for the whole year. So again, Juju Smith-Schuster, sure, he's going to be pulling number one coverage and probably being double-teamed a lot. But eventually, he's going to have breakout games. I think this week against Houston, there is a very high possibility of him having another one of these breakout games. But he's got to be healthy for that. We'll keep an eye on that. But either way, I'm very confident in his usage. He's gotten 14 targets over the last two weeks. Hopefully, that number continues to rise as the weeks progress. Uh, and Juju Smith-Schuster is my number 12. Our next wide receiver is Stephon Diggs. And I know Stephon Diggs is going to be going against a you know, relatively tough matchup against Jalen Ramsey this upcoming weekend. But his productivity, his opportunity over the last couple weeks is undeniable. I mean, the fact that Stephon Diggs just this past week had 13 targets, eight receptions, a buck 53 through the air, and a receiving touchdown has been insane. He's had 22 targets over the last two weeks. And in this offense, the way that Josh Allen's been playing and the fact that they are still able to have a relevant number two and number three wide receiver in this offense is absolutely incredible. I think the fact that this offense doesn't really use the run game that much. I mean, they're giving Singletary maybe 10 rushing attempts per game. That kind of just leads me to believe that this is a pass-only offense. And in a, in a matchup against the Los Angeles Rams, in which it should be a higher-scoring event, these teams are going to be trading back and forth. I expect Stephon Diggs to continue to produce again. At this point, the way that Stephon Diggs has performed over the last two weeks, you're not benching him. That's why he sits at number 13, because you have to play him regardless of the matchup. He's been playing far too well for you to ignore him this upcoming week uh, in week three. So again, Stephon Diggs, a fantastic play going forward. The next wide receiver in my number 14 this week is Tyler Lockett. Now, again, Tyler Lockett has been pretty good over the last couple of weeks. Of course, we all kind of anticipated Tyler Lockett to be a stable wide receiver because of how productive Russell Wilson has been over the years. But Russell Wilson is taking it to the next level, and Tyler Lockett is hanging on to his coattails and just being dragged into fantasy relevance once again, which is beautiful. We love to see it. Tyler Lockett over the last two weeks has averaged eight targets per week. Just this past week had seven receptions for 67 yards and a touchdown. Plays against the Dallas Cowboys. I'm perfectly fine with that. Why? Because that is one of the easier matchups going into the week, especially when DK Metcalf is pulling number one coverage and stretching the field. Tyler Lockett's going to be able to underneath, make some plays, score some touchdowns, uh, and be another one of these fantastic wide receiver plays going into the week. He's my number 14 in a fantastic matchup. Robert Woods takes on the Buffalo Bills, and I'm honestly not too worried about the Buffalo Bills. Uh, Tredavious White, even though he's a pretty good cornerback, hasn't been next level, hasn't been locked down for quite some time now and i think even though robert woods was struggling last week and really didn't get much usage i think what he had five targets two receptions um the rushing touchdown on the goal line pretty much saved this week because tyler higby was taking everything else in terms of the goal line work uh, as of right now they didn't really need robert woods last week i think going into this upcoming week in a matchup in which i'm not too afraid of i think he'll be a pretty good play uh, again he has shown Going back to week one against Dallas, that he could be a 100-yard receiver. He's going to continue to improve. Hopefully, he can put together a pretty good game and score a touchdown this week as my number 15. Uh, DJ Moore is my number 16. Again, uh, the fact that DJ Moore will now have to be asked to do more. I mean, last week, he still had 13 targets, 8 receptions for a buck 20. But without Christian McCaffrey in this offense, I think there's a possibility that this run game stalls out a little bit. And if, in fact, that's the case, they're going to have to pass the ball even more. This upcoming week, they play against the Los Angeles Chargers secondary, a tough to secondary to say the very least. But I think as we continue, Teddy Bridgewater is going to have to pass the ball more. And that's either going to go in the direction of DJ Moore or Robbie Anderson. And I think regardless of the two, I think both of them are going to be great plays. I just think they both complement each other uh, and being able to pull away coverage. Again, Robbie Anderson is a deep threat and so is DJ Moore. But again, they're both going to be able to per, you know, perform pretty well this upcoming week. Uh, he's my number 16. I'm very confident in DJ Moore going forward. Again, a pretty good breakout performance this past week in comparison to what he put up in week one, uh, which was a little bit underwhelming to say the least. The next wide receiver I wanted to talk about is Odell Beckham Jr. He takes on the Washington football team. And as of last week, Odell Beckham Jr. kind of got back on the horse, had himself a touchdown, seven targets, four receptions, had himself a decent game, six targets, four receptions, excuse me, for 74 yards and a touchdown. Uh, playing against the Washington football team shouldn't be a tough task. I think, you know, as of right now, the Washington football team has been pretty good against stopping the run. But that being said, if that is going to force Nick Chubb and or Kareem Hunt to struggle to any extent, Hopefully, they're going to air the ball out, and that is going to go in the direction of Odell Beckham Jr. With Jarvis Landry still dealing with a little bit of a hip injury, Austin Hooper really not finding himself in this offense yet. They're going to have to rely upon OBJ. Hopefully, this week, now that I'm actually trusting him, putting him in the top 17, he doesn't screw me over. But again, 
If he does, I'm moving him back to 29, and we're just going to keep doing this dosi do uh, round and round. But again, OBJ at number 17, pretty confident in that this week against Washington. Uh, DJ Chark's is my number 18, and I know he's been dealing with a little bit of an injury. I got to keep an eye on that. Um, as of right now, he plays against the Miami Dolphins on Thursday night. Miami Dolphins giving up the third most points to opposing wide receivers in fantasy football. Just this past week, Stephon Diggs again at 153 yards and a touchdown, while John Brown had himself a touchdown and 60 plus yards. So again, DJ Chark should be able to feast. Has been pretty, you know, quiet for the last two weeks. You know, he's been a 10 point guy and a half PPR, uh, but four targets per game is not enough for a DJ Chark player. So hopefully this upcoming week with Gardner, if he's healthy, can step up. It's a very advantageous matchup, and hopefully he's up to the task uh, and ready to deliver. Uh, for us either way we move on we have ourselves Allen robinson at number 19 i know i've had Allen robinson in the top 12 for the past two weeks and that's mainly because last week last year excuse me he was a top 12 wide receiver he was putting up incredible numbers he had 98 catches over 1100 receiving yards uh seven touchdowns he had a great year in 2019 but it really hasn't translated to 2020 he plays against the atlanta falcons secondary this week Mitchell trubitsky you have a very very good opportunity but the thing is Mitchell Trubitsky's had great opportunities for the first two weeks. Against Detroit, was a great matchup. Should have been able to feast there. Against the Giants this past week, should have been able to feast there. Yet, Allen Robinson hasn't been able to do so. Even though Allen Robinson has been getting nine targets per game, it really hasn't led to much. Hopefully, this is the week where Allen Robinson steps up and breaks out and has himself a pretty good performance. He's my number 19. Number 20 is John Brown, like I was mentioning earlier. This, you know, this Buffalo Bills offense is no joke. They are letting the ball just fly and John Brown, Stephon Diggs, Cole Beasley, they've been able to deliver uh, with their performances over the last couple of weeks. In the past two weeks, John Brown has had 16 targets, 10 receptions, 152 total receiving yards, and two receiving touchdowns. On average, you know, you got yourself 75 receiving yards, five receptions, and a touchdown per week. That in itself, I mean, that's that's about 15 points a week, 16 points a week in a half PPR scoring format. That is all you can ask for from John Brown. That's better than he was last year. And now that he's the number two in this offense, it's maybe giving him a little bit more of an opportunity to play against lesser cornerbacks, take less double teams, and be able to stretch the field to make plays. I think going forward, John Brown, another one of these good plays. And my number 20 this week against the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, number 21 is Keenan Allen. As of right now, Justin Herbert has just been named the starting quarterback of this team. Beautiful. That's exactly what we want to see. But to take on the Carolina Panthers. They don't have a good secondary. They don't have a good run defense. But the question is going to be whether they're going to need Keenan Allen to step up, score a touchdown, and perform with you know 10 plus targets. Because again, it's a matter of what exactly this team is going to need. I expect the Los Angeles Chargers to come in and run the ball all over Carolina and dominate on the ground. If in fact Keenan Allen is to by proxy get himself a couple catches here and there, have himself a pretty good game, similar to what he did last week. Again, this was a pretty good performance overall for Keenan Allen. Obviously, could have been better, but 10 targets, seven receptions for 96 yards, that is exactly what we want. With the upside of a touchdown on the end of that, that's perfect. But again, that's what we want to see. We want to see these kind of productions uh, from him, from the rookie quarterback. That'd be fantastic. But again, uh, I think that's a pretty solid performance that he had last week. And I'm thinking that's probably what he's going to get this week. Of course, with the upside of a touchdown, that would kind of get him up into the top 12 uh, to 14 range. The next player I wanted to talk about was Julian Edelman. And going into this week, um, you know, it's a pretty good matchup. Playing against the Las Vegas Raiders, again, that's a secondary that's been struggling against wide receivers respectively. But Julian Edelman has always been a 10-point minimum guy. Worst case scenario in a half PPR, he puts up 10 points for you. Best case scenario, it's what you saw last week. 179 receiving yards, 8 receptions on 11 targets. I mean, that is incredible numbers. The upside of a touchdown is always going to be there. But again, as of late, all they've been doing is running the ball with Cam in the red zone. Hopefully, they'll go ahead and diversify as we continue. But regardless, Julian Edelman, another one of these stud plays, another one of these safe plays that you can continue to throw into your lineup because he's got the floor and he's definitely got the upside of a ceiling. Uh, we move on to Devontae Parker at number 23. Devontae Parker has been removed, cleared from the injury report for the Miami Dolphins this week, playing against the Jacksonville Jaguars on Thursday night. He played 88% of the offensive snaps this past week, and I think going forward is going to see more and more opportunity and productivity as long as they're just always in these negative game scripts. Again, the Miami Dolphins are always going to be losing in these games because you know their offense, their defense, they're not at the level to where they're winning games consistently. So that's just going to continue to put you know Ryan Fitzpatrick and his favorite weapon, Devontae Parker, in pretty advantageous positions. So last week uh, against a pretty good secondary um, in Buffalo, but again, like I mentioned, Tredavious White's not locking down everybody uh, anymore. Uh, he had eight targets, five receptions, 53 receiving yards, and a touchdown. So again, the fact that he's cleared from the injury report 
and ready, healthy to go uh, for Thursday night. I'm pretty excited about his matchup against Jacksonville. The next wide receiver I wanted to talk about is Cooper Cup. And though Cooper Cup is typically in that like 14, 15, 16 range, uh, I kind of dropped him down to 24 because he hasn't been great over the last couple weeks. He's kind of been inconsistent. Uh, and though he had a pretty decent game this past week against Philadelphia, that was anticipated. And hopefully he should have had maybe a little bit more. But again, Tyler Higby stealing some touchdowns, three of them to be exact, kind of makes a pretty big difference regardless. I think Cooper Cup going forward against the Buffalo secondary should be asked to do a lot in the passing game and hopefully will deliver. Again, this is another one of these guys that is going to eventually have a breakout game. You can buy him cheap now, uh, but eventually he's going to have himself a pretty good year uh, as he finds his stride going into the 2020 season. Regardless, we move on to our number 25 here. and We have ourselves Marquise Brown. Marquise Hollywood Brown plays against the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, the thing about Marquise Brown is his volatility, of course. Uh, week one, he can have a 100-yard game. Week two, because they're slaughtering that Houston defense, they're not going to need him. But the question is, where does he lie within this matchup against Kansas City? Are we going to have back-and-forth deep bombs from Tyreek Hill, then Marquise Brown? Are they going to continue to trade? That's the hope. That's the upside. But if, in fact, we see a contest in which Baltimore comes out and just runs all over uh, this Kansas City Chiefs defense and dominates the game, then Marquise Brown disappears. He doesn't have to play in the fourth quarter. You don't got to worry about him. But hopefully this is going to be a back and forth, highly contested matchup. If that's the case, he always has upside, but he always has the volatility of somebody else stealing his touchdown, like a Mark Andrews, Willie Sneed, or even the running backs out of this backfield, the plethora of them. They have a literal uh, stable of running backs that is just running loose, uh, whether it's Gus Edwards or Mark Ingram or J.K. Dobbins. Even Patrick Ricard is, is catching touchdowns, which is just ridiculous. But either way, uh, Marquise Brown at 25, pretty safe there. Um, he could be higher, to be honest, on my list. But as of right now, I'm just going to be uh, safe with him, put him at 25. Uh, number 26 is Deontay Johnson. Like I mentioned earlier, Juju Smith-Schuster is dealing with a knee injury as of today. If Juju by any chance misses, no big deal. Deontay Johnson was fantastic last week against Denver. Uh, obviously, when you have Juju pulling number one coverage, it's going to give you more and more opportunity. But... Speaking of opportunity, he's had an incredible amount of targets over the last couple weeks. Has had 23 targets, 14 receptions, a buck 49 and one over the last two weeks. That in itself, pretty good. Now, he is dealing with himself, I think, a toe injury. He's going to be fine. Hopefully, he's ready to go. I think, again, the fact that he's seeing more targets than Juju from the Schuster is a sign. Ben Roethlisberger is continuing to feed this second-year wide receiver the ball. And hopefully, as we continue, uh, in a pretty good matchup against Houston, he's going to be able to feast. Again, another one of these stud wide receivers that's putting it together this season. The next wide receiver I wanted to talk about is C.D. Lamb, wide receiver of the Dallas Cowboys. Again, the take on the Seattle Seahawks. As of right now, C.D. Lamb is getting far more usage and opportunity than Michael Gallup. I mean, the fact that C.D. Lamb had nine targets for six receptions and 106 receiving yards just this past week, a huge sign. Uh, and to be honest, as long as Amari Cooper's feasting, you have C.D. Lamb feasting, and then Dalton Schultz is getting as much work as he's getting. It's kind of eliminating Michael Gallup and really moving C.D. Lamb into this number two wide receiver spot for this team in terms of opportunity and, and fantasy value. Regardless, I think this upcoming week against Seattle got a pretty good matchup uh, and has been getting a lot of opportunity over the last couple weeks. Should be able to act upon it once again against Seattle. Uh, had himself a pretty good week. Uh, the next wide receiver option is Bobby Anderson again. I think that the Chargers secondary is pretty good. But that being said, like I mentioned with DJ Moore, they're going to have to pass the ball a lot if they want to win this game. Whether it's the Mike Davis out of the backfield or to these wide receivers, they need to air the ball out. Their defense is not stable enough to be able to at least keep them in games. Therefore, Teddy Bridgewater is always going to be in a negative game script. It's going to force them to pass, get the ball to Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, helping each other out. Both of them should be fantastic. I like Robbie Anderson. Hopefully you picked him up this week. Uh, he's definitely a top 28 wide receiver and my number 28 on the week. We move on to our next wide. I mean, let's not forget really quickly. Robbie Anderson over the last couple of years has been a middling wide receiver. He's had the opportunity to step up, but Adam Gase has pretty much held Robbie Anderson down. Over the last two weeks, he's had back-to-back 100-yard -back receiving game. Let's not, you know, run, you know, push that underneath the rug and forget about it. The fact that he's had 18 targets, 17 receptions, 223 receiving yards, and a touchdown over the last two weeks shows you just how bad of a coach <laughs> Adam Gase was that he just couldn't do anything with Robbie Anderson. Robbie Anderson looked lost in that offense. He comes over to an offense that actually wants to feed him the ball. And he's getting incredible usage and performing. With McCaffrey gone, I'm telling you, Robbie Anderson is going to get more opportunity. Hopefully you picked him up this past week throughout your waivers if you are in need of a wide receiver, of course. Uh, the next option is Russell Gage at number 29. Like I mentioned earlier, um, if in fact Julio is going to be missing time, Russell Gage steps up perfectly. Russell Gage over the last two weeks has had a total of 21 total targets. Has scored one touchdown, 
has had over 150 receiving yards, uh, had a passing touchdown in the direction of Julio, which in which he dropped the touchdown. Again, playing against Chicago defense, I'm not too worried about. He's continuously getting incredible targets. I mean, week one, 12 targets. Week two, nine targets. That kind of opportunity is something you can't pass up on. And I think Russell Gage going into this week, a pretty good option, especially if, in fact, Julio is going to be missing time or be limited to an extent. The next wide receiver is A.J. Green. And though A.J. Green has been lackluster, to say the very least, I know many of you are starting to already give up on him, but 13 targets is an unbelievable number. Not any wide receiver can get 13 targets in the National Football League. The fact that he's pulling Joe Burrow's eye that many times is just going to eventually lead to success. When Joe Burrow and him finally build a chemistry, again, they haven't had preseason games to really get into it. When they finally build a chemistry, A.J. Green is going to be a fantastic wide receiver because of how much opportunity he's being given. If, in fact, this offensive line is going to be as bad as they are and the run game is going to fall apart, the Cincinnati team is always going to be in a negative game script. Their defense is not helping them out. A.J. Green is going to be called on a lot throughout the weeks. This upcoming week plays against Philadelphia. I don't expect this chemistry to be built in within one week. You know, um, Rome wasn't built in one day. I don't know. What's the, what's the quote? Somebody tell me what the quote is. Regardless, um, I think that there's chemistry is going to be able to, you know, kind of figure itself out. Uh, and Adrian Green is going to be a relevant wide receiver, re- regardless of the matchup. I mean, he is a extremely talented wide receiver. He will get it done. Just got to get Joe Burrow to not throw him the ball 10 yards over his head every damn time. Uh, moving on to another Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver. Uh, you know, Tyler Boyd saved his week with that touchdown last week late in the game. I mean, the fact that they threw the ball 60 plus times is incredible. Uh, but the fact that, you know, Tyler Boyd's always going to be this seven catch, 70 some odd yard guy. That's what he had last week. The touchdown just kind of put was the icing on top of the cake uh, as of right now. So overall, I think Tyler Boyd going forward should continue to be fine against Philadelphia. I'm pretty happy with that matchup again. I don't really worry about anybody except for Darius Slay there, who will probably be covering uh, A.J. Green. So as of right now, Tyler Boyd, pretty good matchup on hand. I think as long as he's getting this opportunity uh, and getting an eye in the red zone, uh, that's just going to continue to lead to success. The next wide receiver option is Darius Slayton. I mean, Darius Slayton, as of right now, the number one wide receiver of this team, sure, he didn't have a great week too, but that's perfectly fine. He plays against the San Francisco 49ers this week. And as of right now, the San Francisco 49ers are dealing a lot with injuries, whether it's Kittle, Mostert, Garoppolo, and in their defense, they don't have Richard Sherman, they don't have Solomon Thomas. A uh, D Ford is probably going to be missing. Nick Bosa, the biggest loss on that defense. I don't even know if they're going to be playing majority of their starters because the San Francisco 49ers have publicly said that they don't really want to play on that field. They just played against the Jets at MetLife Stadium. They got a lot of people injured, uh, and they're they're worried about the field conditions. But Darius Slayton's been perfectly fine there over the last two years. Uh, so I think. Um, As of right now, I'm perfectly fine playing Darius Slayton. He should be a great play going into this upcoming week against a defense that, again, is hurting heavily. And, again, I I think without Saquon in this uh, New York Giants offense, they're going to be forced to pass the ball more. And that's more targets and opportunities for Slayton. Nikhil Harry is my number 33. Again, the fact that Nikhil Harry stepped up as much as he did last week, 12 targets, 8 receptions, 72 receiving yards. In week one, had himself five catches, you know, uh, on five targets for some pretty good yardage. But... The thing was that he fumbled the ball out of the back of the end zone while reaching for the pylon. If he scores there, he has back-to-back 15-point weeks in a half PPR scoring format and is a relevant wide receiver and everyone's picking up. I'm telling you, the fact that he's not picked up in your league is a shame. He should be picked up immediately. He's a great player and he's going to continue to improve. I mean, he's the first wide receiver that Bill Belichick has taken in the first round ever. I mean, come on, guys. There's there's something with Nikhil Harry that the Patriots see and that you got to start opening your eyes to. I mean, he's been playing fantastic. Uh, and hopefully you can go ahead and start him this week against the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, we move on to our next couple options again. These are the players that are on the fringe that could be replaced. T.Y. Hilton sits at 34 because of the injury to Paris Campbell uh, and a lack of wide receiver help on this team. You know, Jack Doyle going down. I know Mo Ali Cox stepped up. Uh, the absence of a Naeem Hines last week. They play against the Jets. It's an easy matchup. If T.Y. Hilton shows up and drops 100 receiving yards on five catches, I won't be surprised. Uh, I mentioned it because I know he has a lot of upside. He just hasn't really proved it thus far with his little injury that he dealt with last week, missing a lot of practice, but ending, ending up playing regardless. Uh, so hopefully this upcoming week uh, can really take advantage of the matchup and, and put together a performance that we can at least be proud of or give us more confidence to start him down the road. Uh, but either way, T.Y. Hilton's number 34. Number 35 is Marvin Jones again. Uh, Marvin Jones has been just underwhelming. Without Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones is not you know, the, the number one. He cannot be a stable number one wide receiver without a number two. 
even back in the day when he was the number one of this team, uh, you know, Golden Tate was taking more targets and getting more receptions in this offense. So even then, he was the number two receiving option on the team. He needs Galladay to come back. Hopefully, Galladay is healthy and ready to go. If he is, he will be jumped into this conversation and probably be a top 24 wide receiver this week uh, and kind of give a little bit more viability to the play of Marvin Jones. But regardless, we leave him at number 20, 35. Excuse me. And our last wide receiver is Deshaun Jackson. Jalen Rieger is going to be out six to eight weeks. Uh, Alshon Jeffrey is still banged up. Carson Wentz needs receiver help. Obviously, they're playing against Cincinnati. They're going to run the ball all over them, but the play action will be available. Deshaun Jackson will probably be open eventually, and if he can make a pretty big play, I'm putting him back on the list. He rejoins us for the top 36 as we close out today. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I really do appreciate it. Again, these are my top 36 wide receivers on the week. Again, rankings are subject to change. You can join us Sunday morning, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for updated rankings as we talk, you know, talk about starts and sits on uh, kickoff with Kirkoff on Sunday mornings. For those of you who are interested, otherwise, patreon.com slash Andrew Kirkoff for those of you who are looking to get up-to-date rankings. I'll talk about some flex rankings, asking unlimited questions for trades, etc., waiver wire pickups, regardless. Uh, all that is there down in the description of the video. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you have not yet already, smash that subscribe button, click that like button, and until tomorrow, we'll, we'll talk about quarterbacks and tight ends. I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys. Peace.